Uber's first hire and one-time CEO Ryan Graves is stepping down from his current managerial role in the company. For more, let's go to Bloomberg Technologies' Brad Stone in San Francisco, who wrote about Uber in his book, The Upstarts. How the continuation of this, really what has been a, a bitter rivalry that now seems to be a, a culmination point between benchmark capital, Bill Gurley in particular, and Travis Kalanick. Tell us about this unfolding. Does it mean that Travis will be removed from the board, do you think? Well, we'll have to see how the lawsuit plays out, Caroline, but you're right. This is a, b a bitter rivalry between one-time allies, Benchmark, one of the first venture capital investors in Uber, Travis Kalanick, one of the founders, one of the personal investors, and then the second CEO uh, to lead the company to great heights, a $70 billion valuation. And really, you can look at these past couple of months in many different ways, partly as, as the uh, chickens of bad management come home to roost, but also as really the the complete deterioration in the relationship between Benchmark and its partner Bill Gurley, who sat on the Uber board, and Travis Kalanick. I think they fundamentally disagreed about how to run the company, when the company should go public, and now who should be the next CEO. They each own equal parts of the company. They each have pretty much equal voting power. And I think this lawsuit is you know, evidence that they cannot figure out a path forward. I mean, it's amazing just thinking back to your book, The Upstarts, and where we saw Bill Gurley really driving after Uber, after Travis, wanting to get a piece of this pie. And as you say, Benchmark Capital has 13%. Could we see the 10% or thereabouts that Travis Kalanick still holds have to be distributed back to the board? I mean, that's about a $7 billion valuation on that stake. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think he would lose his his stake. I mean, what he what he you know is trying to hang on to is his board position, is his influence at the company. You know, nominally, this this lawsuit is about three new board seats that the board authorized to be created uh, back in June 2016, which Travis controls. Now, when he he departed as CEO, which now seems like a year ago, but was was just a couple of weeks ago. You know, he he apparently, according to the lawsuit, pledged that he would give up those seats. Now he. He occupies one of the seats and he has never signed the documentation uh, giving up his power to control or appoint those two board members. And so this is why nominally Benchmark is suing. It's saying that, you know, Travis is trying to hang on, exert control. Maybe he has designs on, uh, as, as he was quoted as saying secondhand, Steve Jobsing it or boomeranging back to the company one day. It's, what's probably true is that he's trying to find someone to fill that spot who's just as aggressive, ambitious, as hard driving as he was. As as uh, Uber's uh, CEO, and I think Benchmark has a different sort of idea. They want a more professional, perhaps less dramatic CEO. They cannot agree, and, and now we get this lawsuit. Talking of CEOs, another former CEO, and actually the first ever employee after Jared Cat and, and, and the founders, Travis Kalanick, hired none other than Ryan Graves. He, to do today, has also said, look, I'm out of managerial roles, but I am staying on the board. Is this timing all wrapped up with the lawsuit, do you think? What's pushed him over the edge to decide he wants to stand down? Yeah, no, I don't think it's uh, related at all. Um, you know, Ryan Graves, you're right, he was the, the first CEO and really one of uh, Travis's you know, kind of right-hand executives. He was, he, but you know, he was a sort of spiritual leader at Uber. He ran for many years the operations, those 500 cities, very, uh, at the time, a very decentralized structure. Um, but over the past couple of months, you know, he has been sort of ceding control of the company. Uh, his domain has, has shrunk. And, you know, frankly, I think he, you know, was sort of feeling burnt out. Uh, so he's focused on, on his board responsibilities now on finding the next CEO. I think, I do think it's a blow for Uber because because this is someone who knew the culture and who could really be a guide uh, to that next CEO, whoever it may be. I mean, I think he still will have a role on the board, but to have an operational role that would have been an advantage for the next CEO of Uber. So, you know, not a good day for uh, everyone's most dramatic uh, $70 billion startup. One of the key investors who himself perhaps had been slightly tarnished in his own reputation of late was Chris Sacker, and he took to Twitter, a Twitter storm we sort of saw, but notably he was talking about Ryan Graves and how he's consistently been respected by others on the board and is great at building consensus, so still important that he's on the board. But how does it go with the new CEO search Any, and indeed morale at the company, Brad? Well, I mean, the new CEO search, as my colleague Eric Newcomer and others have reported, you know, it, it drags on. They're down to three candidates. One was said to be former GE CEO Jeffrey Immelt. Um, 
uh, you know, Meg Whitman uh, took herself out of contention a couple of weeks ago. She was rumored to be on the short list. Um, I think, though, you know, they had talked about wanting to appoint someone by Labor Day. I think they're at an impasse, though. I think that there is a different vision, uh, you know, between Travis and his allies and then Benchmark and its allies about what kind of CEO uh, Uber needs and tied in with that when should this company go public and when does it need to professionalize and perhaps take its foot off the gas a little bit and this is a very divided board you know a board with a lot of bad history now and bad feelings and now a lawsuit and so I think frankly they're kind of stuck uh, 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 on the way forward so I, I you know my guess is it, it might still be weeks or months before we have a new Uber CEO and your second question Carolyn about morale it cannot be good at Uber with one thing after another uh, I think people People have to be wishing that this drama is just behind them.